Hey there, I'm Kimberly Ferguson, CEO and founder of Emerald Expectations Accounting. I'm so happy you're here. The Emerald Corner is a place where life and business meet. So we want to share with you the process of running a business while maintaining a life with your loved ones. In today's video, we're going to be talking about five things that you need to grow your business. So far in this series, we've gone over why you should start a business, great business ideas to start, things you need to start a business, and boundaries to set in your business. If you missed any of those, I'll go ahead and link those for you. Now it's time to start talking about building your business. What do you need to actually gain clients, to gain fans, to start making money, right? Are you ready? Let's jump in. So the first thing that you need is a budget, okay? Now this is obviously going to be difficult in the beginning of your business if you don't have any money yet, but if you had some savings from when you were working before or if you still have a job, try to set aside funds in order to grow your business. Now, this can be done in a multitude of ways, but one of the primary ones is obviously going to be to place an ad. You do this on Facebook, you can do it on Google, you can do it in a local magazine, you, you know, you can do it wherever that works for you. But placing ads is going to build awareness of your company and whatever service or products you provide. So make sure that you have a budget set aside to do that. Number two is a schedule. So just like creating room in your budget for advertising, you need to create room in your schedule. Make sure that you actually put time on your calendar to work on your business and growing it and marketing and all of that stuff every day so that you can be successful. Number three is a growth strategy or in layman's terms, a plan. Have you ever heard the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail? Well. It's true. If you don't have some sort of a plan outlined with, you know, actual steps that you need to take in order to grow your business, it's not going to happen. I mean, a blind squirrel gets a nut every once in a while, right? So if you don't have a plan, you might be able to have some success, but it's going to be limited. You have to have a plan in place in order to grow. That's just the way it is. So Make sure you think about how you want to grow your business. Think about what kind of methods you want to use and then set aside kind of step-by-step -step guide. Like, where do you want to start? What's the first thing you want to do? Maybe that's build a website. You know, maybe that's place an ad in a local magazine or maybe that's putting up a billboard somewhere in your town. Whatever that's going to look like for you, map it out step-by-step -step and put deadlines on it because we want to use smart goals, right? So by this date, we want to accomplish this task. By this date, this task, you know what I mean? Number four is an online presence. Now, whether that's just a website like we've talked about or whether that means social media accounts or Google My Business accounts, whatever that looks like for you, nowadays an online presence is basically unavoidable. You have to have one. Even if your business isn't online, people are still gonna go online to try to find you or they're gonna go online to look at your references, to look at what kind of services or products you have, to look at your history, what kind of credentials do you have. So one way or another, you're gonna to have to be online, right? The other thing with this is if you have clients, make sure you're getting them to leave your reviews somewhere. And you have to have a place for them to do that, right? Whether that's on your Facebook, social media, whatever that looks like, or on Google or on Yelp or you know wherever people would go to find you. If you don't have clients because you're brand, brand new, think about if there's anybody in your life that you have provided the service for or provided your products to and get them to leave you a review. Even if they didn't pay for it, it doesn't matter as long as you provided whatever it is you're gonna be providing in your business to them. Then they can share what it was like to work with you or what the product is like. And that will be kind of your starter reviews. And then obviously as you gain clients or gain customers, you'll want them to go in and leave those reviews as well. Try to avoid having too many people with your same last name. We don't want that to look a little shady, but obviously if you have had family members that you've worked with, you do want them to leave reviews, but. Number five is a network. This is the hardest one, right? You wanna have people to cheer you on. So obviously that's gonna start with your family and your friends, but you wanna grow that to other business owners in your neighborhood or in your surrounding town as well. 
And then lastly, you'll want to have strategic partners. So strategic partner is somebody who's going to basically be marketing to the same customer or client as you. You don't necessarily want them to be doing the same thing as you, but they're marketing to the same people as you. And basically what that's going to mean is that your marketing dollars will go together, right? So for example, if I'm a CFO, I help small businesses to increase their profits and cash flow then I'm going to want to find somebody else who also works with small businesses, right? So that could be maybe an insurance agency or a financial advisor, somebody who's gonna be looking for the same kind of clients as me, but what they do is a little bit different. So think about who is going to be marketing to the same exact client as you and see if you can partner up with them. And basically how that's going to work is you're going to send them referrals and they're going to send you referrals, right? And so it's kind of a inexpensive way to market, but you're going to be building better clients more likely because they're going to be kind of pre-qualified by that strategic partner. So, and then another opportunity, of course, is networking um, in person or online. Online has definitely grown in the last several years. But joining networking events or, you know, your local chamber of commerce or even a networking group. Now, networking groups such as, you know, BNI or team referral network or master networks, these are going to be pay for play, which means you're going to have to pay in order to join them. But basically what that's going to be like is a group of strategic partners. So you'll come in, you'll meet once a week or once every month or whatever that looks like. You'll share, you know, what your business does with these people and what exactly you're looking for from them. And, and one thing to keep in mind with networking and with strategic partners is we want to give first, right? I personally look at it as you reap what you sow. So if you are sowing, you know, generosity and you're giving and giving and giving, whether that is in the form of referrals and you have people that you need to refer to them who want their services or whether it's just value so maybe you give free advice to them or you know you share information that you already have from market research or you know from whatever that looks like but if you're giving value then you're going to get in return it might take some time because you need to build that know like and trust factor but eventually that will come back to you. You will reap what you sow. So try to always be of value and you'll never go wrong in your business. So what do you think? Which one of these was your favorite? And what else do you think maybe should have been included? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in my next video.